mm-hmm. time that I'm like, maybe like one or two episodes. That, that no, very guilty. rarely do they, yeah, even they people are. that, even people that aren't guilty end up looking guilty. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. But I think the most interesting choice of someone who appears on the show is the police department, because I always feel like they either one come across as they're like bragging about how they solved the case and they come mm-hmm. across like that. Or they come across really defensive about why they chose to, to do the investigation this way or why they chose to do this. I agree. Um, kind of, I don't know, defend the way that they, that they handled the case. So it's very rare that you have, and it does happen, that you have this detective that is just gets really close to the case, really cares about the victim and the family, and you can really tell that, that they put everything into to solving that case. And those are the really good ones. Those mm-hmm. those are what I really like to watch. The ones that I don't like so much is when it just seems like the police department is just being really defensive about what, what they did and how they handled it. I agree. Speaking of people, police officers specifically, that mm-hmm. get really invested in the case, there was an episode that was on last season. I still don't know what the title of it is, but mm-hmm. I love loved and Kevin kept making comments about it but there is a female police officer that got handed the case eventually and they kept doing these shots of her where she'd be walking in her police uniform and you know like they have the belt and stuff they would do it from like the feet all the way up but it's not like she was like Heidi Klum or anything that's why it was so funny because she was just a normal looking woman (laughs) but they kept trying to make her into this like sexy police woman (laughs) It's that touch of drama. These producers know what they're doing. I know, but I need to figure out what episode it is. Yeah. Because it makes me laugh. I can envision I can envision it in my head. She had like redder hair mm-hmm. and she had bangs too. It was it's quite the look. Maybe they were in Wisconsin or like so they were in some remote location and yeah. just the way they filmed this, like it killed me. <laughs> I love it, too, when, like, then they ask, like, the police, like, really dumb questions. Like, so Mm -hmm. did you think that that was your break in the case when they got, I don't know, they found, like, the blood spattered clothes or something like that? Did you think? And then that when you thought it was your break in the case? And then you had your man. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Then I knew something was really going to happen. I knew that we were really, we were on to something now. Like, duh. (laughs) The correspondents really do lead the people that they're interviewing. I agree. So, like, I watched one last night and Andrew's like you could say she was an old soul right and it was to some high school students they're like well yeah she liked old people stuff like they had no idea what she was talking about but yeah they're like so then you had your person so then you did this they really kind of lead the interview because like you mentioned earlier most of the people aren't prepared to be on tv right exactly okay so should we rank the yes i want to hear your rankings and we'll compare them to mine Okay, so the current listed correspondence, and I didn't realize that Lester Holt was just, like, the head mm-hmm. anchor. Like, I didn't realize that's what his job was. And I didn't realize that certain people were even involved with the show still. Like, it's kind of weird. Like, Lily Geis is still involved yeah. with it. And I'm like, when do you ever see no, them I love on Lily Geis. Meredith Vieira? When do you ever see them on this? So, I don't I know. I think some of the, the one, when they're on, like, Oxygen or another network, or like, ID Network, then, yeah. like, then the host is sometimes a different person. So that might be when you yes. when you have the not lesser as as the host. Yeah. And like on ID, like Tamara Hall did that for a while and stuff. And but in any case, so the correspondents right now are Andrea Canning. Hoda is yeah. listed here. I don't ever remember seeing Hoda. I wonder Hoda if maybe she was like, did like an, a special episode or something, and that's why they. I don't know, but I'm not including. I yeah. love Hoda, but I'm not including no. her in my rankings for these. Um, Josh Makowitz, Keith Morrison, obviously, Dennis Murphy, and which one is Jeff Rosen? I feel like I never see him. Jeff Rosen does, um, like investigative segments that are usually on the Today Show. Jeff, Jeff Ross. Oh yeah, I don't watch Yeah, his. that's how you say it. Oh, okay. He does, if there's like a special episode, Jeff Rossin might be on there, um, but it's not the typical Dateline. The typical Dateline people are the four. Okay, so let's go then with Dennis, Keith, Josh, and mm-hmm. Andrea. All right, so I would have to say number four is Dennis Murphy. Mm-hmm. Number three is Andrea Canning. Number two is Josh Makowitz, and number one is Keith Morris. My exact rankings. I agree. <laughs> I wrote them down. But mind you, we both ranked Dennis Murphy as number four. 
but it's not that Dennis Murphy's a bad host, like a bad correspondent. He's no, really good. He no. comes across, I think, very genuine and nice, mm. but he just doesn't. I, I think that you watch a Dennis Murphy episode and you just don't remember that Dennis Murphy was was the correspondent. I agree. Whereas Keith, you know, he's going to be wearing like a leather oh, jacket, Keith beanie against is whatever pole they can the buy. best. He is Dateline to me. <laughs> Keith Morrison is Dateline. So I mm-hmm. think that what I appreciate about appreciate about Andrea Canning is that I feel like she really connects with the people that she's interviewing that she's talking to and I think she really mm-hmm. um, finds a connection and like we said she really develops the the character of, of the suspect with the audience so that's what mm-hmm. I really appreciate it, uh, about Andrea also she wears some pretty amazing stilettos I was just gonna say can we talk about how she wears the heels yes. on the grass and sometimes I've texted you before and I'm like how is she walking know. like how is she not sinking into the grass and I clearly see she doesn't have those little heel things on her heels. Yeah, yeah, I know. She's pretty amazing. And as you mentioned, I remember you texted me when I was at the grocery store that Andrea had the season premiere this year. Mm -hmm. So Andrea's star is rising. Those were your words um, with Dateline. So um, (laughs) glad to see that. So what I appreciate about Josh Mankiewicz is one, he has a very distinctive voice. And two, he always looks baffled by what anyone's telling him. I agree. He's always confused or like, what like the looks on his face i feel like if you googled his name right now and looked at screenshots of his face he's gonna have this look Mm -hmm. like are you kidding me Mm -hmm. so i i I just love that about josh mangowitz and on top of things josh has really climbed up the rankings Mm -hmm. for me because of the podcast that means i'm on twitter so he's one of the people that the podcast follows (laughs) on twitter and his tweets are hilarious like if there's a murder in florida like he's like of course it's in florida (laughs) (laughs) like Post something and they're really yeah. funny <laughs> and he like just does like kind of like little shade comments so that's how he's really like yeah off the list for josh me. just seems like a cool guy. and i like the banter between josh and oh Keith. yeah they seem just like a cool duo they're, like they'd be people i want i would want mm-hmm. to hang out with so mm-hmm. keith morrison he can turn the most mundane event into the most dramatic event of your life just by narrating it. What do you think happens at like a dinner party with him <laughs> when he's just like? Do you think he just leans and back, past the potatoes, leans back and crosses his arms and is like, "Or did they? <laughs> did she give you the potatoes, <laughs> or did she?" Oh yes, but I feel like he says that all the time. <laughs> I know. Or if somebody's like, "Hey Keith, do you want another drink?" Oh yes, but wait. <laughs> There's more? <laughs> or do I? <laughs> or do I would be a good answer. <laughs> and then just the way he leans against Yeah. Him. There was like that whole like Every, campaign I mean, or, of Keith Morrison leans on things. Mm-hmm. I, I remember yeah. reading an article and he said he does that so he looks more relaxed on camera. <laughs> but it's, it's pretty amazing. He just seems like the coolest guy to me. Yeah, no, I, I would love to meet yeah. him. I was also looking through um, the former correspondents, Mm -hmm. and I chuckle every time I think of this, that Maria Shriver was a correspondent, and I don't know why, because, like, comparing it to, like, Keith Morrison, and apparently it says here recently, in 2013 to 2015, I do not remember her seeing her on there either in the past five years. Who else? Oh, Megyn Kelly. When was Megyn Kelly doing? I feel like, again, that's probably one of those, like, special episodes. Yeah, it could be. And then there's people like Brian Williams. He used to be. Do you think that he lied about anything on Dateline? Could have. He used to be what Lester does. So he used to introduce it mm-hmm. before his mm-hmm. untimely exit from NBC. As in when he lied about the story. Or being like on a helicopter somewhere or something. Isn't that what he lied about? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Something like that, yeah. Doesn't even yeah. matter. Why would you? I just don't. Like, that's a completely different tangent, but why would you lie about things that are on I camera? I don't know. So weird. Yeah, so I guess if you were going to rank, I guess it's hard to even say what the all-time favorite Dateline episodes of ours It's hard. Because- it's hard. And, and, you know, we were talking about this earlier in that the episodes really do run together. So mm-hmm. there are some really great ones that are memorable, but a lot of them... They're not that memorable, but they're all good. They're all entertaining. I'll watch yeah. any episode. Generally, you know what the outcome is going to be as soon as you see the crime. I know, and I get so mad because there's been a couple of times where I force myself to stay up to mm-hmm. finish it, 
and I go up to bed all angry, and I'll tell Kevin, oh, it was the it husband. It was the husband. Like, why am I? Why yeah. am I shocked? They made me think it wasn't going to be the husband. Should have never got married. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? So, if there is a staged robbery, it was it was the husband. Yeah, or somebody's boyfriend. Yeah, I guess, like for the most part, they just prove like the statistics. Yeah, are right. So if you're a newcomer coming into watching Dateline, mm -hmm. first of all, I think we should say you've been yeah. missing out. But then what would you or what would you tell people that don't think they're interested in this type of program? I think they just need to give it a shot because it's a story, right? And people still think of Dateline, like the example I had from earlier today, that it's a news program because it's a, it's a story and its roots are in news mm -hmm. programming. But it really is a dramatic storytelling hour that it, if mm -hmm. you watch i guarantee and i challenge everyone that if you watch the first 10 minutes of a dateline episode if you think you can just turn it off then prove me wrong but i cannot personally i love true crime i find it fascinating i could watch i could watch dateline every day yeah so could i i was actually also trying to remember what that dateline episode during that party that we got so like we couldn't take our eyes off of it even was and i still can't even remember what it is i can't remember either must have been good it definitely was good <laughs> yeah no i think that everybody should uh, i think that obviously you should give dateline a chance I do think that the one thing that is missing in Dateline, if we're going to talk about anything that's missing in mm -hmm. Dateline, it's reenactment yeah. segments because those are my, one of some of my favorite things yeah. to watch because whenever, and this happens a lot on ID Discovery, which I think NBC also owns, they'll do the reenactments and they'll get far better looking people. So it'll be like, I don't know, like an overweight, like couple, white couple, but then all of a sudden they'll be like Brad Pitt yeah. and, and these reenactments. So if there's anything that I would want to add to Dateline, just to add a little bit yeah. more flair to it, it would be a, a tiny reenactment here and there, mm -hmm. but that's the only thing it's yeah. missing. So Dateline really is like the OG of true crime because, mm -hmm. you know, it's been on for the best part of like 30 years almost. Um, yeah, it started in 1992. So with Jane Pauley. So it has one, it's had an audience and a following. There's very few shows that are on TV that have been on TV that long. Another one of our favorites though is Law and Order, oh which has been on. Sometimes it even crossed over in my mind. I was thinking about episodes and then I, about, I'm like, what Dateline episodes did I love? And I was thinking about Law and Order episodes. <laughs> I know. It happens all the time to me too. Or Criminal Minds gets thrown Maybe in there. Does, does crime right. They do a good job. Well, it's Dick Wolf. Well, Criminal Minds is CBS, but... So, yeah. speaking of CBS yeah. and other networks, they have similar shows. Mm -hmm. What, 48 Hours? Yeah, but I'm like, I never really... I feel like they don't have yeah, the host. I tried. I can't watch them. They're just not as good. And, mm -hmm. and mind you, sometimes it will be the same story. They'll have the same crime, and mm -hmm. they'll, they just don't have the same touch that the producers at Dateline do. And I do think it has a lot to do with the host. Oh, yeah. Because they're the ones that are really leading it. And so, if you have a drier host, then... yeah. You have Keith Morrison. You have an audience. Mm -hmm. I really wish that Keith Morrison would uh, call into the <laughs> podcast to answer all our questions. <laughs> I was just putting it out into the universe. Yeah. Or that we can meet him. You know how I just like. Yeah. I just, you have to tell the audience about. Oh, wait, yeah. Yeah. So can we. Okay. Yeah. So let's. So Lisa for my bachelor party gave me a gift and put in the card for when you want to slip into something a little more comfortable. And when I opened it up, it was a date last night. <laughs> Arguably one of the best gifts I've ever given. I mean, it was amazing. I yeah. still wear it. Madeline wears it too. We put it on us. And the only complaint I have about it is that sometimes the blue, I guess whatever it is, the material yeah. comes off and then there's blue all over the couch. <laughs> so I feel like maybe they could have made it a little yeah. better to where it isn't pissing <laughs> everywhere. But that's my yeah. only complaint. Um, all right. Well, any last thoughts on Dateline? Uh, just get out there and enjoy it, people. If you're a fan, continue to be a fan. We'll join you in that. And if you're not, give it a shot. You'll thank us later. Yeah. And if you think that you're too busy to watch Dateline because like you're cool and you go out on a Friday night, just DVR it. You can watch it mm -hmm. on Saturday. And then you can watch a Saturday Night Mystery so, again that night. Yes, that is true. Um, so Lisa, where can people find you? People can find me on Instagram. It is Lisa Iker. Plain and simple. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can follow the podcast at Underwhelm Podcast on all forms of social media except for Twitter, which is Underwhelm Pod. And then I'm at Real Christy Wheeler, not to be confused with the other Christy Wheelers. And uh, yeah, 
We'll talk to you Bye, soon. Bye, everybody. Bye.